Hello friends, today I'm going to solve little problem number 95, unique binary search 3, 2. In this problem, we are given an integer n. We need to return all the structurally unique binary search trees, which can be formed using the values starting from 1 to n inclusive, okay? And we return the answer. It could be in any order. Now, let's see. Before that, let's see what's a binary search tree. A binary search tree is basically a tree a tree structure where any node the children towards its left node are less than the value of the given node and children towards the right are um, greater than the value of the given node for example in this case we have the node 2 and since 1 is less than 2 so it is towards the left and since 3 is greater than 2 it is towards the right side of this node same in this example since 1 is less than 2 and 3 that is 3 and 2 are greater so it is towards the right hand side of this tree that is it's the it's forming a right subtree of node 1 and here we have node 3 and since we know 2 is less than 3 so 2 goes towards the left side of 3 so that's what binary search tree is now what we need to form is a structurally unique binary search tree starting from 1 to n so as you can see for n equals 3 we can form these five different structures okay so basically how are we going to form these structures let's see how can we do that so let's take an example n equals to 4 okay now for n equals to 4 we can have nodes starting from value 1 and values 2 3 4 right so we have these three these four values now we can choose any one of these as our node root node so one could be one of the root node we can have two as one of the root nodes okay three as another root node and we can also have four as our next root node now starting from one if we are taking one as the root node now towards the left should be all the values less than one right and towards the right should be all the values greater than one and as we have these values these numbers we know that any value towards left of 1 is basically it's 0 and we do not have any 0 node so we do not have any values towards its left so what are we going to do is we are just going to append a null value so null means there is no node at all so we are actually not going to create any branch towards the left now what about towards the right towards the right will be all of these three nodes okay so these three will go towards the right to three and four will go towards the right now we need to make a choice between which of these three is going to be the immediate child of one right so we have three possibilities between two three and four right for one we have three possibilities between two three and four so let's suppose we choose two so if we chose two so now for two we have to find its left and right children as well okay so for left since we have already taken one as the node so there is no more node uh, no more values towards the left of two that can go towards the left right left child so towards the right we have three and four so here we have two possibilities we can have three and we can have four right we had two possibilities three and four okay so let let's just choose three for here so if we choose three then what we found here is now for three we all we do not have anything towards the right because two is already taken as its parent node and towards its left i mean towards its left we do not have anything towards its right we have no four so basically four will go towards right and four is the only value so four becomes the node um for right node for three and now for four we do not have any left and any right value so those will be not now that we have formed this node now what we do is we back track towards its parent node right and as you saw earlier we had two possibilities right between three and four we chose three here we had three possibilities between two three and 
4. And similarly here we had 4 possibilities between 1, 2, 3 and 4. So here we chose node 1, 4, 2, 3, 4. We have different nodes. Uh, so since we chose 3 as the possibility now, what if we choose 4 as the possibility? So in that case we'll have a tree something like this okay so we'll still have one we'll have two and instead of three now we'll have four right so we have a value four here now as we choose the value four over here we know that three is the value remaining and it can go towards the right so three is the only node that goes towards the right i mean towards the left and towards the right there is no value so it will be null okay so Basically, in this way, we now form the two possibilities of these nodes. So these are the two possibilities. And basically, what are we doing? We are appending these two possibilities towards our parent node, that is 2. So what are we doing is we will be recursively performing this problem. So uh, uh, I mean solving this problem so what we start from is one and then we break down that problem we started as one and then we broke down that problem into sub problems so now uh, the sub problem becomes two three four basically we had one two three four one two three four possibilities now we chose one node one value as the node now our possibility reduced in its next iteration over here recursive call and same we have now only two possibilities between these two we choose one of them as no as a node and the next time uh, we chose another as a node and while we chose these two different values we found a subtree and these two subtrees are appended to its parent node so basically we will append these its children to its parent node and we'll keep on doing so on until we reach the node one okay so basically here now if we backtrack from here as well to one so we chose two over here right now what if we chose three so if we choose three then towards the right we'll have node two and towards the left we can have only node four right so this is only one possibility so for one we'll have like three possibilities like this and there will be more possibilities like what if we chose the value 4 so if we chose the value 4 from 1 then from 4 2 and 3 will both be the right uh, towards the left so we have two possibilities between 2 and 3 if we chose 2 then 3 will be towards its right because 3 is greater right and if we chose 3 then we'll have 1 and then 4 and if we chose 3 3 will be towards the left as 3 is less than 4 and 2 will also be towards the left of 3 is 2 is less than 3 so basically for one root node one will have these many possibilities so that are five different possibilities right so these five possibilities we will append to root one and then this whole solution will go okay these all of these five solutions will be appended to our result and similarly we are going to do the same with two three four and then finally append the nodes the tree to our result okay so this is how we are actually going to approach this solution now how do we um, solve it in our code right what algorithm do we follow so for that we are going to perform a recursive call so let me just clear this out okay so let's suppose that we are taking two as a node then if we take two as our root node then what are the values that can be both that could be towards right well only one right and what are the values that could go towards the left three and four so what we're doing what we'll do is basically we'll choose the range the range that can be go go towards left and towards right so here we are going to create a function a helper function which will take the starting and the ending values towards uh 
both the sides so here starting value is one ending value is also one because we only have one value right and towards its right its starting value is three ending value is four so now we go towards the right towards the left and we have one one now in between one we can only have root node one right since we only have one value so we add the root node one as our result now for the right hand side we can choose between these two right so let's suppose we choose one we we are actually performing a four operation here so we choose the first one three and we add three to this now we need to find the left and right of this one so the left will be equals to um, uh, three and then uh, it should be three right but what are we going to do is we are going to pass on two so what's happening is from this root node the end value will divide my, subtract by one and uh, that's one over here now if we were to find the left of this one also so we will call a helper function the start will be the start value which is one and the end will be the start minus one why start minus one because as you could see if we are choosing this as our root node and this is our start this is our end so start will always be the start and now towards its right what is the end what is the end here one is the end right one is the start and one is the end and what about towards its right okay this is the left side what about towards its right well now this is the start right so start is equals to two plus one so that's why we have here three towards the right and similarly here end is equals to 3 minus 1 that is 2 since 2 is less than 3 we found end to be less than 3 so it's going to return a null value so we will won't have any node towards the left same in this case since 0 is less than 1 we won't have any values towards its left what about right so for the right also we take start as node plus 1 so that will be equals to 2 and end will be is equals to end so which is one so here also end is less than start so that will return a null and we will have null towards its left and right same towards this left and what about right towards the right now we have start plus one so three plus one is equals to four and then end is the end value which is four so now we only have one node we choose that as our node and then we try to go towards left right and basically it, it happens the same thing and we return a null so this is how we form a node here we formed a node right so while every time we are forming a node which we, we backtrack the possibilities a list of possibilities that we uh, that could be uh, it's subtree towards its left and towards its right so here one of the possibilities was this one the other possibility is if we choose four as the node then three will be towards the right right so this is the next possibility so these two possibilities we will be returning to this node so that uh, we can append it as a right right child right once one at one possibility will have this next time we'll have this one okay so basically this is how we're going to solve it now let's dive into our code and see how we can code it and i'll explain it along the way okay so let us first um uh what do we need okay let us first create our helper function equals to function and we are passing the start Okay, S T R T start and end right start and end as you could see we help a function we are passing start and end and when we first call our helper function we are passing the value starting from one and our end is the n right it should be inclusive value so n and starting from one now while we are passing the helper function what we did here is for the base case 
when we sh we saw that one comma zero right so when end was less than the start we returned null right so that's what we are going to do if uh, start is greater than end and we return return an array of null so now next we are going to iterate for each of the values because once we want to make one as the root node next we want to make two as a root node a third time we make want to make three a fourth we want to make four as a root node so we are starting from our start is one end is four so we are iterating over each of these values right so let the for loop let i equals to start i is less than equals to end because we want to include the end value and i plus plus right and now while we are iterating what are we doing we choose one of the nodes and now we find its left and we find its right and while we are finding its left and right node we are recursively performing that uh, that operation right and so while we are recursively performing that operation we have multiple op multiple possibilities so all of these possibilities will be storing in a array okay so let us also create a result array where we'll be storing all of our possibilities and now let left is equals to we want to find the left trees first left subtree so helper and then we pass the start which will always be the start and the end value will be our root node that we chose uh, minus one right similarly uh, right will be helper i plus one and end okay now that we have our left and right trees uh, now what we want to do is we want to append this left to uh, the left of our node right and since left this is an array that we are returning over here so we want to append each of those right so what if we will be doing that one at a time so for l of left and similarly we will also be appending each of the right okay so now um we will be creating a node at this value right with this value so let a node equals to a new tree node so we are using this definition to create our node and here we are going to pass the value as i now we need the left right so left will be equals to l right l so uh, similar with the right we will be choosing r and this gives us our root node left and right and then uh, once we form our node we are now going to append this to our result so result dot uh, push push to our result node and this result will be uh, returning returning at the end so as your lt result so what happens is uh when we form a node let's suppose we chose the value okay let's take this example we chose the value two right so i is equals to two that will mean this is equals to uh start will be one and end will be equals to one only so one one so now we form a recursive call and since this function is this value won't this condition won't be satisfied and now our result is empty and then now we start from one and at one and now we again perform a recursive call and now start is one and becomes equals to zero so now here since start is one end is zero this condition is true so we return a null array so now left is a null array okay so null array <clears throat> null array when uh, for uh, i equals to one right for i equals one okay now for i equals to 
1 what are we going to form right so right will be i plus 1 which is equals to 2 and since end was 1 so end was 1 so end is less than start and that will also return a null uh, array so now that we have an array of nulls so it will check the null value and then also the right will be null and we will form a new node with the value equals to one and its left will be null right will be equals to null as you can see it's left and right are null and then push that to our result and now we do not have any more elements in the right either we do not have in the left as well because we only had one value that was null and then what we do is we finally uh also do not have any values start was one and was also one so we do not have any values for i as well so we now return our result which is node one and we are returning our result to the left of two so what happens is now our value returned is one okay node returned is one and towards the right we do the same similar three and thing and we'll have three right and we iterate over these of both of these values so we iterate over one we iterate over array this array which only has one value that is three and we form a new node where i is equals to two so we form a new node with two and towards its left is one towards its right is three and we push that to our result and then we return that result to its calling uh, function and so on. So now let's try to run our code and see if this works. Okay, we found an error. What was that? Okay, we are actually not returning this value. So return. Awesome, let's submit this. great now talking about time complexity as you could see um we are creating a for loop starting from so basically start and end so we will have one to two n right uh and uh each time what are we doing from one to n we are again uh iterate I mean recursively calling over this value and again towards this left hand side and right hand side so we form the node um yeah so time complexity complexity should be o of n in this case and the space complexity is equals to also o of n if we take into consideration the stack space that is occupied by these recursive helper function calls so i hope you liked my solution let me know in the comments down below thank you so much